أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فنسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى بأسمائه الحسنى وصفاته العلا أن يجعلنا وإياكم من المستمعين للقول والمتبعين أحسنا وأن يجعل ما نقوله ونسمعه حجة لنا لا علينا يوم الدين ثم أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته For me when I was asked to talk about what about what after Ramadan there was something that came to my mind and I was thinking about why does Ramadan return every year and then I started contemplating about why and then for me it was Ramadan comes to show us that we have the power to move on from belonging to becoming, from talking the talk to walking the walk, from thinking to feeling, from knowing to doing. A lot of Muslims, they ask themselves the question like, how can I become that strong spiritual person? Where do I found, find the strength in order to become that person that I read about in the books? You know, you read these beautiful stories of old where you read about Abu Bakr, where you read about Umar, radiallahu anhuma where you read about these pious predecessors that would really, literally fast during the day and pray during the night. And then Ramadan all of a sudden shows you that you are a part of that story. Ramadan comes you to remind you that you have the power to be that person. Know that you are that person. So the person that you read about is also partially yourself because you have been doing something incredible, something you thought not to be capable of. That what you are dreaming for, for that what you are longing for, dreaming of during, during the entire year of being that spiritual person is actually who you are right now. You've been fasting all these days, you didn't give up. You've been reading the Quran, struggling, fighting time, fighting a jungle named dunya. You've been giving it your everything and you ended up reciting the entire Qur'an, fasting an entire month and barely sleeping. So now the question that people ask is, how am I going to hold on to the person I am during the month of Ramadan? How am I going to stay strong? Well, the first thing we need to do if we want to know that, we have to look at the ingredients of Ramadan. So what is different in Ramadan? What is Ramadan giving me so that I find that power to change. And the first thing that you will find, that even that the coaches say is the importance of community. That which makes it easier for you, for me, for everybody during the month of Ramadan, to keep on going is literally knowing that other people don't give up either. So that's the first thing. Like if you would have to fast an entire month on your own, that would be very difficult. If you had to pray taraweeh all on your own, that would be difficult. But now Allah Jalla wa ala, He shows us that when we do it together, that we are able to hold on and that we do not give up. What does this mean? It means that whatever you want to achieve in your spiritual or your religious life, you need to create a community that wants to do the same thing. You want to memorize the Quran? Do with people who memorize. You want to pray at night? Create a group with people who want to pray at night. You want a good behavior? Create a group of people who want to what? Who want that same behavior, to achieve that same behavior as, our, as yourself. So the first thing, Barakallahu Fikum, in the month of Ramadan, is Allah teaches us that if you do it together, then you will be able to hold on. And if you truly look at what you try to achieve in your spiritual life, it's always on yourself. It's always on your own. From now on, I'm going to fast Monday and Thursday. You give up. From now on, I'm going to read the Quran every, every, what? every month. I give up. From now on, I lower my gaze. I give up. From now on, I pray at night. You give up. Do you know the problem? Why? Because you're doing it literally on your own. The majority of people, when they want to achieve something in their religion, they don't even ask Allah. Some people don't even ask Allah. I'm, I'm asking you by Allah to be honest with yourself. Like when you said, I'm always going to pray on time. Did you raise your hands? Did you say, Ya Rabbi, allow me in your dominion, in your kingdom, 
to pray every prayer on time. Ya Rabbi, allow me to lower my gaze. Ya Rabbi, allow me to stop gossiping. Help me. So the thing is that even the spiritual life that we try to live, we don't even involve Allah. It is like we are thinking about the rule and we forget about the ruler. We're thinking about the hukum and we forget the hakim. So this is why you see that the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, they were strong because they were together. So that's the first thing. The second thing, barakallahu fikum, which is very strange, like usually we think thousand years before doing something. Like I would like to do this or that. So we keep on thinking about doing things and we don't do them. Did you think about doing Ramadan? No, you just did it. You did it and you proved yourself that you could do it. Conventional wisdom, conventional wisdom tells you, change your mind and your body will follow. The new wisdom now tells you, do and your mind will follow. Not first think and try to think, think, think. You just have to get it going and your body will keep on doing. So that is what Ramadan is telling us. Instead of overthinking things thousand times, just get going and ask Allah to make you what? To give you perseverance. And that is the point where I want to talk about perseverance. Why don't we persevere in our worship? Like literally so many people, and I believe that people are sincere. You want to do it. Everything in yourself is telling, I want to stop gossiping. I want to lower my, lower my gaze. I want to memorize the Quran. I want to pray all of my prayers on time. And I believe that you want to, but why doesn't it happen? It is because there is something we did not learn the art of perseverance. How do we come persevering in what we do? How are we going to change this? Imam al-Ghazali said, the first thing is knowing what the merits are of perseverance. You know why? Because the majority of people only get going when they know what's in it for them. That, that's the way people work. The moment you know what you get, that's the moment you are able to do something. Like, okay, that's big enough. That's enough money for me. Let me just get it started. Now, if you know the merit in the Quran of perseverance, of starting something and not giving up, then you're going to do it right now. Wallahi, you're going to do it right now. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, Inna ladheena qalu rabbuna Allah thumma istaqamu. Those who say Allah is my Lord and then remain steadfast in their actions, tatanazzalu alayhimu al-malaika. Yani, when they die, when they're on their deathbed, the angels, Allah didn't say tanzilu, tatanazzalu. Fawj ba'da fawj, meaning one group after the other. When you are persevering in what you do, you have groups of angels coming down to you when you are on your deathbed. Tatanazal, one after the other, one after the other. Why to bring you at ease because you are heading to another world that you do not know. Tatanazalu alayhimul malaika. And what are they saying? Allah takhafu wa la tahzanu. Yani, don't be afraid of the future. And don't be sad of the past, uh, of what you're leaving behind you. You're leaving behind you your family, your wife or your husband, your children. You're leaving behind so many things when you die. So when you die, you have two things on your mind. Where am I going to and what am I leaving behind? And these angels are saying, because you were perseverant, even if it's a small thing, you say, from now on, I pray all my prayers on time. That is istiqama, that will be your reward. From now on, I fast Yani, on Monday alone, and you keep on holding on to it, that will be your reward. From now on, I don't gossip, that will be your reward. From now on, I will never break somebody's heart. You keep, you hold on it until you die, that will be your reward. It's easy. But you need to know the reward for what you do. That's the way that we were created. We don't, we don't like to move just for the sake of moving. Something has to get us moving, and this ayah should get us moving. So Allah Jalla wa'ala says, تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Do not be afraid and do not be sad. And then, نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا yani, We are your allies in this life and the next. Meaning, we are now here to accompany you while you are dying. Now we are protecting you of thinking negatively because you are seeing the angels of Rahmah. Yani we are your ally in this life and in the hereafter. Meaning, don't be afraid to give your soul. Don't be afraid. We will welcome you. Exactly as you find us here, you will find us huh, on the other side. That is what they're saying. And that's when the mu'min is ready to give his soul. When you know, like, I've got nothing to fear. <laughs> yeah, subhanallah. 
Well, I have nothing to fear. The place where I'm heading is beautiful because the angels have promised me. So now when they say all of this, يعني, الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكة ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون comes first, right? And be happy with the Jannah that you were being promised and that you desired and wanted. So while you are on your deathbed as a reward of holding on to things, you are already being given the glad tiding of paradise. Do you really think that you don't want to die when you know that, that you're for paradise? Do you really think that your, your body is going to hold on to your soul? You're going to let go. The Prophet ﷺ said, when the good soul is about to leave the body, it comes out like water out of a, a jar. You know when it goes like, that sound, you know, tak, 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 tak. This is the way that your soul leaves your body. Like, there you go. I just pour your soul into the akhirah. And that is when everything goes smoothly. Man ahabba liqa Allahi, ahabba Allahu liqa. The Prophet said, when you love meeting Allah, Allah will love meeting you. So when you now are perseverant in what you do and you make that your life mission, you start with something and don't give it up. Don't start with many things. Start with one thing until it becomes a part of you, until it is ingrained. Only then you take your second step. But the problem is so many people are telling you to do so many things that your mind says, this is too much. I can't do it all, so I better do nothing. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa like in the sunnah of Abi Dawood, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and said, Ya Rasulullah, there are so many things to do in the sharia, meaning extra things. So many things. And he, what do you tell me to do? He said, keep your tongue moistened with the dhikr of Allah. Done. One advice. Don't think that you on your own can carry the entire sharia. That's impossible. Halal is the same, haram is the same. But you can't be that one that excels in fasting and in the Quran and in this and in that. And you are burdening yourself with things that you cannot carry. And this, this is why the Prophet ﷺ gave every Sahabi a different thing. When you look at the life of the Sahaba, they would come to the Prophet ﷺ and they would say, Ya Rasulullah, what is your advice to me? He said, La taghdab, like in Al Bukhari. He said, do not become angry. Another one says, Ya Rasulullah, what do you advise me? Keep your tongue moistened with the dhikr of Allah. Ya Rasulullah, what do you advise me? Salli fi, yani fi awali waqtiha. Pray in the first, at the beginning of prayer time. Everybody had a different advice. There was a general advice, but there was an individual one. How do you find out what your individual advice is? Look at the way that you were created and look at your strengths. You, the strengths that you have, you did not acquire them. You did not, you know, make them grow in yourself. They are God-given. Look at your core. Look at your pure self when you are at your purest. Are you somebody who likes to help? Somebody who likes to reflect and ponder? Somebody who is strong? Whatever it may be, look at who you are. And the strength you are being given is your key to paradise. This is not by chance. We don't believe in chance. We believe in Allah al-Khaliq. Jalla wa ala subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now to come back. Like we, we need to understand that we can't do everything. But if we have an ummah where everybody does something, we will be a representation of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad was all of that alayhi salatu wa sallam. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, when Allah spoke of him, he spoke of Ibrahim as an ummah. Meaning he was doing everything that usually only a community can do. But we need to represent Muhammad Ali's community by being that building, yani that, that structure of different bricks that make that entire building. That is who we are supposed to be. So, now to continue. <laughs> the Prophet Ali said, Nobody dies before seeing his or her place in paradise or in hell. Everybody. Meaning that the moment you die, the veil of the unseen will be lifted. Meaning that you now will see Jannah or not. This is when you can't speak anymore. This is yani, when the soul reaches the throat and you're going like, uh, you're trying to say there are angels, you're trying to say there are shayateen. You, are, you don't know at that particular moment what people are trying to say. So the veil is lifted and then the fight for your life starts. Either it is for your eternal life in Jannah or either suffering as long as you can in that body because you're afraid to go to the Akhirah. And the, the, the pain that the angels if afflict upon you or inflict upon you is, is, is more beloved to you than going to the hereafter. Can you imagine 
that the pain you experience while you are being beaten by the angels. And the angels, they hid their faces and their backs. Then he says, that this is what the angels will do. But nevertheless, you say, I'm going to hold on to that body because I'm not going to the next life. I don't want to. Leave me here, beaten or not, I don't care. So now, وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ Oh, take my soul, I'm going to Jannah. وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَادُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ We are your allies, they say, in this life and in the next. In this life and in the next. Meaning we will welcome you. Even in Jannah, you're welcomed by the angels. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يَدْخُلُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ مِن كُلِّ بَاب سلام. And the angel says, Allah, they will welcome them from all the doors of paradise. Min kulli bab. What does that mean? There are centillions of doors in paradise. Centillions, more. And from each door, an angel will come to greet you when you enter with your both feet in paradise. Can you imagine? Just being welcomed in Jannah may take centuries. Subhanallah. And so you just enter paradise. This angel, that angel, that angel, that angel. Salam alaikum, salam alaikum, salam alaikum, salam alaikum. You're so happy. It doesn't end. Just the greeting makes you happy. And this is what they do when you die because they're so happy that you were able to hold on to a very fine line. Yani, that was your, your life rope. Wallah, it's not easy to be a Muslim. Wallahi, it is not easy to hold on in the midst of a world that is continuously changing. But the Prophet ﷺ said, Yani, bite on it with your molar teeth. Don't let go like a pit bull. Boom. And you don't let go. It shakes. You can shake it, whatever. It doesn't let go because your eternal life depends on it. So just by choosing to do something and never let go, then this is your reward. That's your reward. I will never yell at my wife or my husband again for the sake of Allah and I will be mustaqim. I will hold on to it. This is your reward. So why is it difficult to hold on to something knowing that this is the reward? So this is why when we come back, yani, نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا Yani therein, in Jannah, you will have everything that you long for, but then they say Nuzulan. Now some say Nuzulan means the place in Jannah. Yani your Jannah is a place that Allah has given you. Some say Nuzulan, yani our Nuzul, our coming down, was by the command of the majestic Allah Jalla wa'ala. We didn't come on our own behalf. We came to greet you as the ambassadors of the divine before you die, to tell you you are going to Jannah, you know now. Nuzula min Ghafurir Rahim. We came down by uh, with the command and order of Ghafur Rahim. This is the importance. Now, is it one angel? No. Is it two? No. Three? No. Four? No. Tatanazal. Boom. Yani one, two, three groups. Because they are so happy with that beautiful soul. And then, then when, they, when they take your soul to the skies, Barakallahu Fikum, then yani, the Prophet said, there is no gate in the heavens that will open or they will say, who is this beautiful soul? Who is this beautiful soul? And they will say, it is Fulan ibn Fulan or Fulana bin Fulan. It is this person, the son of such and such or the daughter of such and such. And they say, marhaban, marhaban bi ruhi tayyibah. Welcome, welcome with this beautiful soul. How will you feel when you can go where N-A-S-A, Naza, we do say Naza like that in English or Naza, what do we say? Naza, we do say Naza? Naza? Okay, Neza, you know, that ex they explore the, the universe, right? So you will go to places where no rocket has ever been. Some people ask me, why did Allah create things that we cannot see? Because the dead people will see it. The moment that you rise, you know, first, second, third, you see planets and stars and things that you, you couldn't imagine. Why were they created for the beautiful soul when she dies that she is marveled by the creation of Allah? Maybe we will never explore the, the end of this universe, but the soul will travel it. As for bad people, it will be said, this gate doesn't open, send it back. I don't want to see it. Uktub hadha yani fisijin. Write them down in the, the scripts or the scrolls of the bad people. But if you are strong, mustaqim, level one. And the Prophet said, 
the first heaven in comparison to the second is like a ring in the ocean, uh, like a ring in a desert. And the second one in comparison to the third, the same. And the fourth to the fifth, and the fifth to the sixth, and the sixth to the seventh, and seventh to the arsh. You go till the arsh, and then it says, write my, the name of my servant down, Fi'liyin. And then they descend with you, like the Prophet ﷺ said, on a, a, a tissue from Jannah, which has never been introduced to the, to the world in life, which smells better than anything people have ever scented, and, and then you're being put in your grave by these angels. Why wouldn't you hold on to things knowing that this is what you will get? Unless we think that it is like one <laughs> thousand and one night stories. But what Allah says is truth. وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا Who speaks more the truth than Allah? إِنَّ هَذَا لَهُ الْقَصَصُ الْحَقِّ وَمَا مِنْ إِلَهٍ إِلَّا اللَّهِ يعني This is the true tale, the true story. So if you know that it's true and you're a Muslim, you believe that it's true, then why don't you do it? Maybe because of weakness of faith or lack of trust in what Allah says? If not, start, start doing. Just do and ask Allah to, to help you. So, تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَلَّا تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبْشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُعَدُونَ نَحْنُ أَوْلِيَاءُكُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدَّعُونَ نُزُلًا مِنْ غَفُورٍ رَحِيمٍ Yani this is what we were commanded to descend with by al ghafur Rahim. And this is why when the Prophet ﷺ was asked by a man, give me advice, he said, Qurrabbi Allah thumma staqim rawahu Muslim. <laughs> he said, say, my Lord is Allah and then remain what steadfast. Why did Allah say Rabb? In the ayah we see, inna alladhina qalu rabbuna Allahu thumma staqamu. Rabb. In the hadith it says Rabb. Why is istiqama and Rabb together? Because Rabb, is not just Lord. The Rabb is the one alladhi yurabbik. He's the one that makes you grow spiritually, religiously. He's the one that makes you grow through the tests of life. Like Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ اللَّهَ Fear Allah and Allah is the one that will teach you. He will teach you what you cannot find in a book. Life teaches you many things. And one of these things is that life is not perfect. Allah created this world with imperfection so that we would long for the one who is perfect. No matter how beautiful something is, there is always a point where it breaks or shakes. Or where you get used to it. And that is why Allah gave us eternal bodies in Jannah, because we never get used to the beauty of Allah. Yani, this is why Ibn Atayillah said, if you want to know your value, yani, in brief, yani, paraphrasing him, then look at what Allah gives you as a reward. He didn't think that the dunya was sufficient as a reward for you. The dunya with all its beauties, imagine, you are in dunya, you don't become sick. You don't become poor. There is no war. There is no nothing. There's just happiness. That would be sufficient. And we are just 27 and 33 years for the rest of our lives. Alhamdulillah, dunya would have been sufficient. But Allah loves you so much that He didn't want less for you than Jannah. So He created an entire new universe as a reward for your actions, while your actions are actually nothing more than a divine gift. Allah is rewarding you for something He made you do. So, why would we even despair of Allah? You know, very often the only reason why we despair is because we think that Allah is like we think He is. But we have to look at Allah the way that He told us He is. Say, O my servants that drown. Can you imagine? My servants that drown in sin, that transgressed against themselves in sin. Meaning they're like literally sinning, sinning, sinning. How is He calling them? O sinners? O you losers? O you weak creation? Ibadi. My servants, so that everybody would know as long as you believe in Him, Jalla wa ala, there is a chance for you to be saved. So, this is why when He says, Quliya ibadi ya ladina asraf wa ala anfusihim la taqnatu mi rahmatillah, inna Allah yaghfiru dhunuba jamian, inna hu hul ghafur rahim. They say the only one who despairs of Allah is the one who despairs of Himself. And He looks at Himself, uh, at Allah through His own what? Anyway, so now, Barakallahu fikum. When we look at, look at Ramadan, we see Ramadan is telling us like that we are really strong. You, not me. I exclude myself from that sentence. You are very strong. You, can, do you actually see what you're doing? You, 30 days in a row, you're not eating during the day. 
you're praying during the night, you are behaving like awliya. You are truly the allies of Allah. I mean, the majority of Muslims even maybe don't pray. So if you pray and you fast and you read Quran and you're going against your own ego, what kind of a strong person are you? So if you were able to do it now, you should be able to do it always. And how are we going to do this? Once again, community. That's the first thing. The second thing is by reminding yourself of what you get when you put yourself to it. And the thing we said was what? Istiqama. And then the third thing is don't think and do. Start doing and you will start thinking like it. Now, so instead of thinking, just get started. We, we think five years about memorizing the Quran and then we say, well, it's not for me. How do you know? You never tried. So this is why, Barakallahu Fikum, to cut a very long story short, it's the Muslim is a very, very strong being. Very strong. So Quran or Ramadan comes once again to show us that it is not about belonging, it is about becoming. It is not about thinking, it's about feeling. It's not about knowing, it's about doing. It's not about talking, it's about walking. I mean, for me, it's still not normal that we believe in Jahannam and it doesn't make us cry. We believe in Jannah, it doesn't make us happy. When I look at myself, I say, what's going on with me? Like, how, do, how does that even make sense that I didn't wake up today with happiness in my heart that I'm carrying la ilaha illallah, the key to paradise in my heart. Did it make me happy today? Maybe not. I, I think I didn't think about it this morning. I didn't. No, I'm not going to lie. I woke up just another day and I still felt that I had needs in life. What can a person need who has Jannah? I'm not talking about myself. What can a person need who has the key to a palace made out of a carved diamond? How can he even feel weak, needy, and poor? So this is why I think the biggest challenge today is becoming. Belonging is a safe feeling, and it made us passive. I'm Muslim. I'm fasting because everybody's fasting. It's a part of my... So in very brief, Barakallahu the, Fikum, the Prophet, when he saw the people, like in the Musnad of Imam Ahmed, during the, the night journey, or rather the ascension. He saw people who were literally, whose lips were being cut off with scissors of hellfire. And he said, Man ha ya Jibril. And he, who are these people whose lips are being cut off with scissors of hell? And he said, Hum ummatik. Ma la wa kitab wa la they are the speakers of your ummah, the orators of your ummah who say what they do not practice. And they are the ones that read the book of Allah and don't bring it into practice. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said, رُبَّ قَارِ لِلْقُرْآنِ وَالْقُرْآنُ يَلْعَنُ How many a person recites the Qur'an while the, recite, while the Qur'an is re, yani cursing him or her? Why? Because we read the Qur'an to belong, not to become. And that's why even now in Ramadan, maybe the Imam recites the entire Qur'an and all these ayat that are being read, we do nothing with it but we just want to belong to the book. We, belonging won't save us. <laughs> it's about becoming. It's about investigating or looking into the book and comparing it, like holding it like a mirror in front of yourself and asking yourself, what is wrong with me? But now we feel so safe because we talk about Islam 24-7 that we started believing in the illusion that talking about Islam is the same thing as living Islam, that talking about patience is being patient, that just sharing an, uh, yani a what, uh, how do you call it, emoticon of, of tears when people talk about Palestine, for example, emoticon tear, 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 but you have no tear running over your cheeks. So I mean, what is, you think that emoticon is going to save you? So it is no longer about belonging. It is all about becoming. And this is, this is the biggest challenge. It is not about knowing, it's about feeling. Where is the feeling? It's not about talking, it's about doing. I mean, if, if you talk about Palestine, or about Yemen, or the problems in the world, oh, my heart, broken heart, emoticon, broken heart, whatever, and you, you do that, but even at night you don't wake up just to make a simple dua. Where is the hurting? 
Where is the sincerity? Like some people even use or abuse the hurting of other peoples to give an impression of themselves. Like I care about the Ummah. I am spiritual. I am a brother. But you never do even like this during the night. You put your alarm clock to at night, the last third of the night where everything is accepted. Even that is too much. But writing on the internet, subhanAllah. So this is why Barakallahu Fikum. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam spoke about knowledge that would disappear, one of the Sahaba Radiallahu Anhu said, Yani wa kayfa dhalika ya Rasulallah? And why would knowledge disappear? Wa naqra'u kitabana, wa nuqri'u al-kitab abna'ana wa nisa'ana. Why would knowledge disappear while we recite the book? And we teach our children and our wives how to recite the book. He said, I used to think that you were the most intelligent man of Medina. He said, didn't you look at the people of Ahl Kitab? He said, didn't you look at the people of Ahl Kitab? They read the book. And they teach the book to their families, but they do not put it into practice. How many ayat are, are being heard which are not being answered? And this is why one of the scholars said, مَا رَأَيْتُ حَاضِرًا أَشْبَهَ بِغَائِبٍ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ I have not seen anything as present that looks as absent as the Qur'an. It is everywhere. It is recited everywhere. And this is why once I asked the shaykh, one of my shaykh, somebody asked him, like about memorizing the Qur'an, he said, we are not as much in need of people who memorize the Qur'an as we are in need of people who practice the Qur'an. You know, if, if we have 50,000 people who memorize the Qur'an, and it's necessary, and one who practices the Qur'an, show me that one who practices the Qur'an so I can sit at his knees. If, if I find, wallahi, someone who practices all the verses in Kitabillah, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with him. Because I haven't, I didn't become yet. The way to becoming is so long, it's so painful it is so it's in need of such a long breath it's about literally asking yourself what you did with the book of Allah and this is why when the Prophet وسلم, will come Yawm Al-Qiyamah Rabbi what will he say Inna qawmi Qur'an mahjura. he said my people migrated away from the Quran they treated it as something that is abandoned and Ibn Kathir Allah mentions in his tafsir yani taraku, what they left they left understanding the Qur'an, memorization of the Qur'an, and practicing the Qur'an. The only reason why Qur'an very often is present is either for decoration, or either it is for celebration, <laughs> either for celebration, or for recitation, and I'm sorry I'm doing like this, I'm not meaning this mosque, no, not you, definitely not you, or recitation in taraweeh. And that is where Qur'an is. We are people with a book that we don't understand. Can you imagine? We all say, Qur'an, Qur'an, Qur'an. What am I saying when I say, What am I saying? What did I say? So we have a book that we don't understand and then we complain about the fact that we don't get to Allah and that our faith is weak. What would you expect if you don't know how to read the map? You will never arrive at your destination. It's with everything like that. You don't follow the map. You don't follow the road. Like people get lost in a forest, right? In America. They say, don't get off the path. Don't just follow it. Okay, I will, I will. They go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and they get lost like for five weeks. <laughs> and now you're traveling to an unseen world and you don't read the map? <laughs> that, that doesn't make sense. It is time for us, as I said, to get away from just belonging to becoming. Like that beautiful hadith. Where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the, the Sahabi who gave away his garden, you all know the, the, the what, you know the story. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, You will never be righteous until you give away what you love. And he said, my garden and my date trees, all of it are for Allah and his messenger. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he looked at him and said, no, keep some for yourself. He said, no, this is what I love most and I give it away. It would be like us now looking at we love, what we love most, go home and give it away in sadaqah. I don't have the strength to do that. I could give something that I like, but that will not harm me. No? Like, okay. But he know, he went immediately to, Allah says this, I want righteousness, so what should I do? 
give away what I love most. That's my house, my date trees, and my well. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, bakh, bakh. Yani, it's, it's like when you're amazed, like, like this is just too much, you know, bakh. And then he went home and he told his wife. Imagine you have to go home and tell your wife or your husband, you know the house that we have, I just gave it away. Uh, oh, alhamdulillah, at least we have the garden. No, the garden I gave it away as well. Alhamdulillah, at least we have the water, the well, you know, we can make some money out of the well. No, oh, the well as well. So you mean we have nothing? Exactly, that's what I mean. But I don't mean we have nothing. I mean that if I give something away for the sake of Allah, then I'm going to get better, but in an eternal world. That's what I mean. So now, his wife looked, and she saw that her son was eating a date. She went to her son and took the date out of his mouth, and she said, my son, do not eat what does not belong to you. wa <laughs> And they had this submission and that is what made them the best people. They were not in need to philosophize about the rules of Allah. What does it mean? It was I hear, I do. Our problem is that we have a kind of Iblisi approach. When, when, when we are ordered to do things, I first need to understand in order to, yani, to execute. That is what Iblis did. Like... Why would I prostrate for somebody whom you have created out of clay while I'm a made out of fire? <laughs> he was the first racist. Um, he, he thought that being good or bad was be, uh, retraceable to what you are created from. So now to come back. So the moment Allah said something, they would execute it. So now she said, my son, do not eat what is yours. <laughs> Done. Don't eat. That was immediate, immediate submission. Then she took her bags, she walked out of her house, she looked at her house, she looked at the day trees, she looked at the well, and she said exactly like Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Like literally like wow. And this takes us like sometimes people feel bad just to say wow. Astaghfirullah, don't you say subhanallah. The saying of subhanallah is not obligatory, right? You can also say wow, amazing, incredible. And then people feel bad and they think that the person in front of him is a jahil because just they say wow. Naam. Say astaghfirullah or say subhanallah. We don't, we don't swear. We don't say negative words, bad words. But the Prophet said, bakh, bakh, nothing Islamic about it. Naam. It's Islamic now because the Prophet did it. Naam. So that, that's the difference. So now to come back. Like, and then the, she just shook her head and said, this is too much. Like, this is good. So are you ready to become? Or you just want to belong? And then, what now? What, are, what, what am I going to do about it? I know that I, sometimes you hear verses and you prefer that you didn't hear them, hear them because you know you will be asked. Like the police in America, they say everything you say can be used against you in the court of law. Everything we hear here from Allah and His Messenger can be used against us in the highest court of law where Allah is the judge and the witness and the one who decides where you go and end up. So it takes courage to read the Quran to become. It, Wallah, it takes courage. But Ramadan comes to remind us that we are stronger than we think. And, and this month was the proof of that. So why are we, what are we going to do after Ramadan? We are going to do Start with something that we want to die upon. And we are going to leave something we don't want to be doing when we die. Two things. That's the first thing. Look at something. Like, how would you like Allah to see you? Is it as a worshiper during the night? Is it as a faster, during somebody fasting during the day? As a memori somebody who memorizes the Quran? Or just somebody who is being good to his mother? Just that. You say, now I'm going to serve her like I never served her before. Ibn Ajib mentions in Iqad al-Himam that when Musa salam, asked Allah to destroy Fir'aun, there was a period of 40 years, some say 70, 40 years before Allah yani, replied or responded to the question of Kalimullah. And then Ibn Ajib says, لِأَنَّ فِرْعَوْنَ كَانَ بَارًا بأمي. Because the only good thing Fir'aun had was he was good to his mother. The moment his mother died was the moment that he was destroyed. 
The moment his mother died was the moment that he was destroyed. So look at how you want to end your life. Don't try to do it to, to, you know, to give false impressions of yourself. We, we have been fooling ourselves for too long. We have been giving that image of a very religious and spiritual person and still we started believing it ourselves. We know who we are on the inside. We know what we talk about. We know who we are behind closed doors. Let us start there. Let us start with the person who we truly are. Instead of being, being what, uh, being, uh, instead of believing in our own yani, mirage that we have created, or yani, it's, it's a problem. So, who do you want to be? And who don't you want to be? And make that your life's work. What is the sin that you keep on committing every time over and over again? The problem is, like Imam al Ghazali said, the more you return to the sin, the more likely it will be that you die upon it. Because it became a part of your life. And that's why he says in his last book, Every time that shaitan gets you to sin, rebel against him by means of repentance. Because you know what the problem is? When you sin and you don't repent, you die in a state of sinning. You do not die in a state of repentance because Hibatullah al-Barizi, Rahimullah al-Qadi al-Shafi'i, he died in 738. He said that whenever you commit a sin and you do not repent, every second that you didn't repent for that sin is a sin because it's a listihana. And it is like looking down upon his majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I sinned, so what? When you tell your child, say sorry, and this is not now. I will do it when I'm ready. What does that feel like? How do you feel? That is what we do with Allah. The problem is that child, <laughs> we sometimes think that we are more important than, than Allah. The way we behave, we don't think it. We expect from people to treat us in a way that we don't treat Allah. That's why Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah wa jal, in Madari Jusalikin, he said, don't be surprised that people don't give you your haqq if you yourself don't even give the haqq to Allah. People call us, we call people, we want them to respond, they respond the next day. And you saw, you saw my message, you read it, I saw it. it, the little birdie was blue. Why didn't you respond to the great me? <laughs> oh, because I have nothing to do in my life than to respond to you. <laughs> so what, why, what, what happened? Allah calls Allah, million, yani more than 6,000 verses in the Quran, Allah is calling us day and night, 24-7. And we, do, we, don't, we, we don't reply. Are we more important? I want to be forgiven, Ya Rabbi, but I'm not going to forgive you. <laughs> so there is, a, there is really a problem. And the problem is that we found our comfort in telling that we belong. And now if you really want to change, it is time that you say, I want to become. I want to become what I know. I want to feel what I know. I, I, I know that it's not normal that I believe in fire and that I don't cry and shiver. It's not normal that I believe in Jannah and that doesn't make me happy. It's not normal. And that's what we tell ourselves. And then we start our journey. And don't wait for people. Like Imam al-Ghazali said, yani, the more difficult the climb, the less participants there will be. Like you climb a one mile, uh, whatever, or 500 meter, 1000 meter hill, you've got many people up hiking, yeah, let's go hiking. And then you got 2500 meters, oh, I don't think I'm going hiking today. <laughs> like, and, and the higher it becomes, not only the less participants, the fewer participants there will be, but the steeper the climb will become and the more dangerous. Like people are ready to give their lives to reach the peak of the earth. They lose fingers. Some of them, they, they lose their lives. But yet they keep on going. Why? Because they want to say, I reached the highest of highest. How do you think it is if you climb the figurative mountain to reach Allah? The higher you go, my friend, the less people will understand you. Because you will be in a word they can't comprehend. You will have dreams they do not understand. You will yearn for things they don't even want. You will cry over things they think to be worthless. Whatever it may be. And this is why yani, when you climb that mountain, don't, expect any, don't wait for people to follow. It's about your skin, literally. 
كلما نضجت جلودهم بدلناهم جلودا غيرها ليذوقوا العذاب every time their, their skins are burnt we give them a new skin it's about save your skin try to get people on board but not at the expense of you not moving even Nuh carried on without his son at a certain point عليه السلام even at a certain point it was you know mounting the boat was about kufr and iman it was not about protecting ourselves against the weather like oh we've got no it was if you believe get on the boat and if you don't yani, then you stay out of the boat so at a certain point even Nuh left alayhi salam so you're alone so ذرني ومن خلقت وحيدا leave me alone with the one that I have created alone yani, as an individual لقد جئتمونا فرادا كما خلقناكم أول مرة you have come to us as individuals like the very day we've, we created you. So your journey is, yani, it's not about, Allah will not even ask you about what people did. Read your own book today, you suffice as a witness against yourself. So if we think about all of this, your journey has already started. It's just for you to jump, <laughs> to mount the boat. The, the, the journey is there. You know, it's not waiting for you but you can still jump on. So, now, to come back, Barakallahu Fikum, we have belonging, we have becoming, we have knowing, we have doing, we have thinking, we have feeling, we have dreaming, we have execution of the dream. Don't stay on that first side, but, you know, go gradually to the other side, and then, bi'ithnillah, your reward will be nothing less than إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهُ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ ألا تخافوا ولا تحزنوا وأبشروا بالجنة التي كنتم توعدون نحن أولياؤكم في الحياة الدنيا وفي, وفي الآخرة ولكم فيها ما تشتهي أنفسكم ولكم فيها ما تدعون نزل من غفور رحيم So this is in very brief what I want to remind myself of يعني سبحان الله uh, Sometimes when you speak like myself I teach a lot then you know that you if you were to speak because of something in yourself you would stop speaking but the only reason why speakers keep on speaking is for two. For two reasons. One, because Allah is beautiful. We don't speak because we are beautiful. If, we would be be if it would be because of that, we would stop speaking. صح? And the second thing is because in life, you're either a receiver or you are a what? A giver. What? A giver. No. Either you receive or either you send. And in this life, when you remain silent, too often what you receive is bad. So my only way out is to keep on speaking so that I don't hear. Allah, dunya is being thrown at us every second. On our phones, on our laptops, on our everything, wherever you go. So I ask Allah Jalla wa ala to, to forgive us and to forgive me for speaking about his religion, speaking about him, knowing that I'm not worthy at, the, yani, at all. But inshallah, we ask Allah Jalla wa ala to strengthen us and to give us the power to put into practice what we preach and to make us strong and to allow us to hold on to what we do and never let go and to then have that beautiful, yani, that beautiful spectacle when we are on our deathbeds like that man. And I finish on that note that raised his hands to the sky like Ibn Rajab Rahimullah mentioned in Jamil al Hikam. When he said, Rabbi, khudni ilayk, inni ilayk ila mushtaq. Oh, my Lord, take my life because I long for being with you. I ask Allah Jalla wa ala to make this beneficial. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallillahum wa sallim wa barak ala sayyidina wa habibina wa qudwatina wa shafiina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May Allah Jalla wa ala give you the best in both lives. Give you a beautiful Eid, inshallah. And, and rejoice. With Eid. Now it's even haram to fast on the Eid. So definitely barakallahu fikum. Yani enjoy. It's a day of gratitude. It's a day of shukr. And it's a day of dhikr. Allahumma ahdina fi man hadayt. Wa afina fi man afayt. Wa tawallana fi man tawallayt. Wa barik lana fi ma atayt. Wa qina wasrif anna sharra ma qadayt. Fa innaka taqdi wa la yuqda alayk. Fa innahu lan ya'iza man adayt. Wa lan yadhilla man walayt. Tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayt. اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا وقرارنا 
اللهم اجعلنا من الهداة المهتدين اللهم اجعل بقائنا في هذه الدنيا صوما واللقاء معكم ربي عيدا اللهم اجعل خير أيامنا يوم نلقاك فيه واجعل محبتنا لمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أحب إلينا من الماء البارد على الظمى اللهم لا تأخذ أرواحنا إلا وأنت عنا راض اللهم لا تؤاخذنا بما فعل السفهاء منا لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين وآخر دعوانا إن الحمد لله رب العالمين